MT. Today, we are tackling one of my favorite topics, retrospectives. And if you are one of those people who goes into a retro, enjoys the talk for that hour, whatever it is that you're together, and then you leave and you just think, what just happened? Are we going to do anything? Then this video is for you. We're going to talk about what, what impact are we actually making with retros? And I'm going to just throw it on over to Lior, who I know for a fact has some great ideas about how you can uh, enhance the impact that you are having in those sessions. Thank you, Alana. Um, so I think one of the things people forget about retrospectives is you're, you're kind of creating like a little mini objectives for your team. You know, so we tell business people, um, if you are, you know, what, what's your business case for the feature that you want to deliver or for this product that you want to deliver. And in order to get something funded, they have to come up with targets that they want to hit. When you're having a retrospective and you're seeing something like, oh, well, we're getting a lot of defects. Maybe we should do peer reviews or maybe we should change the way we're testing things. You should quantify what the change that you want to create, right? What you anticipate the change is going to generate. Does that mean we're going to have 40% fewer defects? There's no way to know. Similar to business objectives, you come up with a hypothesis, you put the practice in place, and then at the end of the sprint, after you've done it, you measure to see whether or not you achieved um, your objective, and then you tune from there. So hy hypothesis-driven development, but applied to um, to your you know your investment in your process and and your your uh, team. I think that's a really uh, interesting insight, Leo. Um, have you do, have you got to the point? Have you seen teams actually use this? Oh yeah, every team I coach, we're, uh, I we create um, an improvement backlog. So as you know, every retrospective will typically, you know, we'll finish and what can we do differently? You get five, six, seven items. Um, we suggest don't take more than one or two because the too much change for a team to take. And then if things change, you don't know which thing changed it if you're doing four things at a time. So you take the one or two, you create the hypothesis around those one or two. The remaining ones go to, go into an improvement backlog that you check. Because what might happen is over the course of several months, uh, the same thing might get kicked out and not chosen. But if you keep the improvement backlog, you'll see, oh, wait a minute, this thing came up three times. Maybe it's more important than we thought. That's uh, interesting. I think what I've done, I've done something similar, not exactly the same. So I've not actually had a separate backlog. But uh, what I've what done with teams is the specific action items from a retrospective. So uh, uh, Alana, in your uh, introduction, you talked about kind of maybe nothing changes, everyone just moans. One thing, like very concrete thing that I try and do with every team is make sure that you have specific action items that are owned by a person coming out of the retrospective. And that might be as simple as create a story on the backlog. It might be as simple as arrange a meeting with you know, another person or, or another group of people at another time. So it could be very simple, but make sure you have action items. What I have done with teams is to, to kind of further that is to say, take your action items and put them on your sprint board. So your action items from the retrospective at the end of the last sprint become tasks on your sprint board for the next sprint. Further than that, um, I'd encourage teams to put them at the top of their board. So you could say, okay, a sprint board should be in, in priority order, um, high to low, and, and the most important feature at the top well, what's more important than continuous improvement? Nothing, hopefully, um, if you're investing in yourself. So, you know, there's your there's your rationale for putting it at the top. Every day we stand up now, I can see those tasks. I can see the owner of those tasks. And we can say, why have you jumped down to story X um, and not progressed uh, your, your retrospective action? So that, you know, it's quite extreme in that instance, but um, it certainly avoids kind of turning up in two weeks time and, and nothing's actually changed. I love, that's a really great tactic. I love how, the idea of keeping it on the board because so often you'll think of the thing and you have an owner and um, and then they go through the sprint and everyone's like, oh, I just forgot about it. And so it's a great visual reminder. Um, well, um, and well it's, it, it, Alana, it's like, it, it was actually in a response to being in a room and running a retrospective and having actions on post-it notes and Ben saying, right, I'll take that one. Ben takes the post-it note and Ben puts it on his desk and then it gets covered over with a bit of paper and, and Ben, you know, maybe glances at it or maybe forgets it, but no one's there to hold him accountable. No one's thinking about it. When it's on the board, everyone's looking at Ben and saying, you know, you took this action, Ben. <laughs> we haven't done anything about it. <laughs> And also, uh, I would add like this question: Can you commit to do to to this? Because if the person says yes, there's a commitment there, okay. And 
And also it is important not to accept uh, answers that are not like uh, committed based. Like for instance, I'll see what I can do. That's not like a commitment, okay? The way to answer this, yes, I can commit. That means you have the time, the resources or whatever that will allow you to achieve that task, to, to accomplish it. But that's for me, it's it's important as well. So just by the virtue of the fact that you say those words, you're introducing, you're increasing your chance of success. I think that's really important. Like the converse of that is assigning things to people. Assigning things to people is about as far the other way as you can get. I never even wanted to do it. I never said I could do it, but you gave me this thing and it's now, never, you know, it's probably unlikely to get done. Mm -hmm. Ask for a volunteer and ask for a commitment and you're going to be like 100% better off. Do they feel comfortable with the thing they're like, if it's an item and the team's decided, yes, we want to do this, I confirm, do we feel like it's reasonable to do this within a sprint? Do we want to give us ourselves a bigger timeline? But to have one person and to confirm that's it, that granular uh, accountability, I think is really awesome. And it also is in line with what we preach for when we commit to sprints, right? Like we should always be asking ourselves, do we feel confident we can complete this in this amount of time that we have set? And if the answer is yes, then at the end of this time period, we can go, what happened if it didn't happen? And I like that, that forcing that conversation, not in, um, it's not to blame anyone. It's more of like a, all right, cool. Like we were wrong. Let's talk about it. But at least you have that very like specific thing to point to that said, we said, yes, we said we had everything we needed. What went wrong that we could plan for in the future? And I thought, I think that's really cool. That's where holons come into play. That's why I like the concept of holons so much. Um, just do every concept that's applicable to one area of where you're doing things is applicable to all of them. So if we're saying transparency, be transparent everywhere. If we're saying accountability, if we're saying commitment, if we're saying it's a pull system, um, it doesn't matter where you are, individual, team, team of teams, executives, at, like it's all a very simple concept that applies to every whole on in the agile world. When you're committed to, to something, to a task, um, that means not maybe you won't achieve that, okay? And maybe it's okay, but it's important how you deal with that, okay? Maybe you can raise your hand and say, okay, uh, I'm having like uh, an issue here. I would like to talk about this. How can you help me? Because if I'm not able to do this, I won't be able to meet the deadline. So when you own that, you feel accountable. It can also give you your opportunity to say those things. And if maybe that goal is not achieved it, during the journey, no, it was different. It was, okay, I want to say that maybe I won't be able to achieve that because of this. And I want to, to know if you can help me out. Uh, it's different than arriving at the end by saying, oh, I didn't meet the, the, the I don't know, the goal, for instance. Awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, this was a great conversation. I'm going to just leave with one uh, other, like, tips and tricks um, that I've done with teams in the past. Uh, I think we talked earlier about how something might keep coming up. Leo, you said like you might have the same topic come up. That's why having a backlog, an improvement backlog would help. So you could see if a topic continues to show up. I've done um, once a quarter with teams, I'll get a word cloud going. I've generated, I like would export all the retros into a word cloud and it'll show like the, the words that come up the most that will be the biggest. And then there'll be the smaller words. And it's really kind of cool to see in a visual manner in a word cloud, what topics keep uh, just like keep repeating. And it's just a fun, it's kind of a fun thing to do with the team at the end of a, 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 a quarter or whatever time frame you set. So um all right, cool. Well, I, this was awesome. Retros really are one of my favorite topics. So Ben, Leo, Lucci, thank you so much for your input. And for those of you watching, please let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you took anything away from this and used it, we'd love to know how it went. Uh, so please reach out to us and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.